comrades. This is Sergey Ushanka show, and we have our another live. And this one is to mark 53,000 subscribers. Uh, thank you for joining. We got uh, one person right now, but I hope we'll have more. Please uh, let me know if the sound is okay. So we will get ready in a minute. Let me see if I can get it on a big screen. So we will get started. Once we have some people coming up. Wow, suddenly I have 10 people out of one. That's pretty impressive. We actually have somebody from Kiev, Ukraine, which is pretty cool. Happy to see you here. Uh, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments, uh, please let me know. I'm trying to figure out how to get this glare out of the phone. I got Finland here, BC, I guess is British Columbia, Greek people in Germany, Lithuania. I got Chicago here. So, all right. So we got the first question. Do you love Stalin? No, uh, definitely not. Uh, I don't think Stalin was a good leader. Uh, he made uh, Soviet people pay a huge price. Uh, and then the result, we almost lost war with Germany, uh, lost millions of people starving uh, to pay for his industrialization. And in the end, uh, he died and didn't have anybody to take over properly. So, of course, a lot of people complain about Khrushchev. So, no, I don't like Stalin at all. Las Vegas here, Lithuania. How's it going? I wonder what you do. Mexico. All right, so next question. Do you think U.S. is moving too far left? I don't think so. I mean, definitely society is changing. Uh, what used to be, uh, you know, normal, then now it appears. I think that in politics, uh, actually everything moved uh, too far right. Like right now, w Democrats, like in my opinion, do, they are like moderate Republicans. If you look at their policies or policies in in Europe, uh, Democrats are actually modern modern conservatives, and uh, Republicans just went complete far right. I mean, you know, everything holding Bible and like we, we think you're ready to send ready to send people to Mars, but we still think uh, Bible is uh, our guidance. So I don't think uh, it's moving far left. Uh, it's changing definitely there's no doubt about that but think about it back in 19 maybe 20s and that was unheard of for women to vote right and that's considered normal so now women can vote and do you think it's a and they vote a lot of them the big trump fans so you know it's considered normal uh question from jonathan i know i noticed a lot of your comments thanks for watching my channel who is uh, bogdan so I am an old timer, you know, I'm almost 50. I'm gonna be 50 this July. Uh, so I'm not really good with all technical parts and doing YouTube. So he's the one who puts together my videos. He uh, became a fan of my Russian channel. I have another channel called uh, Druga America, the other America where I tell um, former Soviet people about life in the USA. And uh, he loved my channel and he offered his uh, help putting together my videos to make them better. So. I never met him, we just talk online. Uh, he's a little bit younger than me, probably about 15 years. So that's what it is. Uh, did you ever talk about Dyatlov Pass incident? Nope. Uh, I actually, you know, it wasn't much in news during the Soviet days, then later during Perestroika it came up, but I wasn't paying much attention to that. I'm surprised there is a such a hot topic in the West, but it's definitely bizarre what happened. Hey, we got the first donation from David. Uh, he's loving my book. And already on page 103 days. That's really impressive. I'm glad you like it. I had actually comments on my, my book that people who hate reading, they actually end up reading my book pretty quick. So it feels really good because, you know, I translated that book myself, you know, wrote myself uh, and I translated with some help, but my main, main job of translation. Hey, my sister from Colorado is here. That's the uh, lady that sent me salo, that uh, Ukrainian style pork fat. 
I think tonight we're going to enjoy it again on the stick. That's the best way to consume it. Other way, you can also uh, freeze it and then cut it while it's frozen and eat it with your meal. I might um, put some fresh uh, garlic heads inside of the salo, put more salt and pepper and let it sit for a month. That'll be good. Uh, question about uh, your favorite pierogi feelings. You know, it's kind of interesting. My mother never cooked pierogi. Pierogi is kind of like a fast food for the Soviet Union. So usually you buy it on the streets and then kiosks. Uh, I kind of like more fruity, so like a jam feeling, and it's safer because <laughs> you never know what kind of meat they can put in there. Uh, greetings from Greece. Well, wow, we see people all over the world. Uh, are you happy with American school system? No, I'm not. Uh, I am not impressed, let's put it that way. I like some of it. I like the part uh, that they do more sports, more team sports, more competition, a little bit even too much, but I like that part. Uh, but uh, generally, I'm not impressed for like actual knowledge and all that. It's way too easy, hardly any homework. I don't think it provides a lot of value. Um, we have another question and donation uh, from New York upstate. Um, this is my viewer, he's uh, learning Russian, so he's asking, Are you planning to make a video about woodpeckers? I think he's talking about the Chernobyl. Uh, I don't know much about it, but it sounds like one of the uh, reason they put Chernobyl power plant is to supply power for this giant. I believe Jatil was like early, uh, early warning system for the missiles being launched from the Western Europe. And I think it was really powerful, so it was consuming a lot of megawatt hours, uh, but definitely not all of it because we had like what almost five units there working. It's a lot of megawatts. Do you think that Soviet Union would never survive because it was uh, so suppressive, even if Andropov lived for a long time? Because nobody really supported the system. Well. My view that the only way socialism can work or being super suppressive is pretty much, I mean, that's my personal opinion. Uh, you can make people work hard only two ways or uh, out of fear or out of greed. Uh, socialism doesn't allow greed. Uh, so all you have is fear. And that's what Stalin did. Uh, I don't know how quality work was, but everybody was afraid and everyone was uh, reporting everyone. So he made people work really hard, like pretty much slave labor. Once they loosened up and uh, it just went downhill and I said, socialism is a perfect system for perfect people. Uh, since no one is perfect, or maybe I'll say maybe 5%, okay? There's 5% who don't care, they'll work as hard as they can, even without being rewarded. But usually it's what is it called in American sports uh, downplay. And if you play the weak team, you start playing weak yourself. So if you work at the factory and you assemble 100 bikes a day and a guy next to you assembling only 10, but you both get in paid the same in the end, uh, you also be assembling 10 bikes or even less. It's just uh, Soviet economy wasn't efficient, uh, wasn't really uh, developing because no one was interested, there was no competition. I mean, think about Ural motorcycles. They, they manufactured them for so long, so now it's like brand new vintage motorcycle. It's, I mean, it's not a good thing. All right, we got only, uh, we got 58 viewers, but only 13 likes. So don't forget to like this uh, live stream. It will help it to move up in the charts for YouTube. Uh, I am 55 from USA. Uh, do you feel like your generation X? I am going to turn 50. I was born in 71. So I guess I am generation X, but in Russian we call generation H, which is I don't like because uh, all our, uh, the worst uh, Russian word, swear word, which is corresponding to Dick, which is who it starts with letter H. And it's always they tell you your uh, object that starts with H letter. So I guess I am Generation X, but I don't see myself as American Generation X because I have a completely different mentality set. 
Uh, we got Croatia, Zrinko here. Hello. Uh, thank you for watching my channel and commenting. Do you know about Artyom Tarasov, the first Soviet millionaire? I put in, uh, information about him on my list, thinking about researching that topic. I think it happened during the Gorbachev era yet, and he was the first that showed his taxes and he was making an insane amount of money. Uh, but no, I don't know much about him. That I was too busy myself than watch other million. I mean, I never become a millionaire. We got Koala, greetings, hello. If the Soviet Union was still around today, what do you think would be like China, more like democracy? Well, if you look at Russia, you know, this is a kind of good education because uh, after creating, you know, those wild 90s, uh, Putin kind of trying to put it together, kind of like Chinese model, have a, a giant state-owned corporations or state corporation owned by his friends. Uh, but Soviet people, you know, mostly Russia, I mean, look, Belarus, Kazakhstan, uh, you know, there's a natural selection and there's a socialist selection. So anybody who had initiative, uh, who was like critically thinking they were uh, gone, uh, arrested or left the country. So the population kind of tends to like to have strong leaders, which we see now happening in Russia with Putin. So honestly, I don't know what happened. Okay, we got another donation uh, from New York upstate, uh, a question about uh, chess. And uh, once again, it's in Russian, yes. Uh, it was, you know, since we didn't have a lot of entertainment in the Soviet Union, uh, we were probably saying that we read the most books, but people were reading books because it was just the only kind of entertainment you could find. And also, like, we play a lot of chess with my friends. I mean, I had kind of nerdy friends, but um, almost every evening, you know, uh, my friends will gather together Uh, in my apartment, we'll play a couple uh, games of chess and then we go outside. So actually, I plan to make a video about how I play chess. And then between classes and school, we had these little books and we played chess. So that was a lot. But I just say just because of lack of entertainment, which is good, right? You know, if you have a choice to watch some soap opera or play chess, you know, your brains develop way better when you, uh, I mean, they don't develop at all if you watch soap opera. So yeah, that was a. Chess were good, and unfortunately, it's missing out. Is that I just watched that Queen's Gambit, and that was interesting because uh, there was complaining there, like how you know there was like second grade college, uh, they had the competition state, uh, United States Championship, and hardly any people watched it. So it's like they already knew that that won't be popular, and if there'll be tennis or other ones, there'll be way more uh, sponsors, way more journalists. Um, Okay, what else we got? How many years are you going to do your books? That's a really good question. I don't have a, a kind of any time limit. Uh, I'm planning to write four books about four years. Then I came to work at a summer camp and I kind of started working on a general book called Born in the USSR. So that's just uh, my story and my family story of growing up in Soviet Union because um, I was born in 71 and I was 20 when the Soviet Union disappeared. So that's five books. I don't know how long it's going to take because I said I'm not, I can't afford just to do YouTube and writing books. Uh, I have bills to pay. Uh, so it's all kind of like on the back burner I'm doing when I have time. Uh, but I'm working right now translating my 1996. So it's show you what I got. So this is my uh, 1996. So it's my second book. Damn, I used to be some Ivan Drago looking dude, huh? And so this is uh, my ex uh, adventures uh, in, in America in 1996. I went to California for the first time in my life. Uh, so yeah, if you if you can read Russian, uh, you can already buy it. I have it available on sputnikov.com. You can buy a signed copy of electric book. So I'm working on translation of this right now. An original book. This is 1995. I have both in Russian and English. Once again, on sputnikov.com, or you can just shoot me an email at sergeysputnikov at gmail. You'll get signed copy and there'll be some surprises in there too. Uh, so four books of this format, American Diaries, 
and then uh, born in the USSR, just a general. Because uh, the topic, I guess, in high demand, because right now, Bolden bankrupt, his story about traveling in post-Soviet space is like on the top uh, sellers for the Soviet history books, which is pretty wild, but I guess there is a room uh, to for more books on that topic, especially for somebody who actually lived in the Soviet Union. Okay, we're moving along. Uh, only 30 likes, so guys, don't forget to like this video. I appreciate that. It will help it to move up. Uh, to, to, to. For people who did not go to post-secondary education, could they apply for a job where they wanted to? Uh, well, okay, so after you finish with school, uh, you had several options. Uh, first of all, you can have Nepolne Sredne Brazovania, so that's like unfinished, uh, what they call it, Sredne, so middle education, because we call higher, like you call high school, but we call it 10 years in school is called a middle education. So you finish middle school, it's 10 years, and then high school will be college or institute or university. You could do only eight years. That's like Nipolna unfinished uh, education, school education. You can go to work. You can go anywhere you want. You don't own government anything. Most people uh, who finished only eight years, they will go to professional uh, technical uh, college, uh, some people are familiar with the term PTU, PTU uh, so you're getting this, like basic uh, blue color, uh, so that's like trade school, welding, uh, woodworking, metalworking, uh, retail, something like that, so girls and boys, so whoever was weak in, in school, they will go or straight to work at the factories or better just join PTU, or technicum, another one was technicum, so it's a technicity. I don't know what the heck technicum actually means, but it was a little bit uh, better education, like better trade school, more advanced. So that will be your option after eight uh, years in school, you go to PTU, professional technical college or technicum, like advanced uh, trade school. And those, I think, after you're done, you can go anywhere you want. If you go to college, like real college institute, we call it a university, then after you're done, you had, I believe, three years, they could send you, uh, especially it would be like medicine or uh, teachers, they can send you anywhere in the country and you need to pretty much pay back to the government for your free education, which is, I think, a great idea. I mean, a lot of people aren't happy about it. Of course, if you had blood, Remember that word, if you have connections, you can pull strings and they will send you anywhere. They find you spot where you want to be. So yes, uh, you had freedom of choosing where you're going to work. And sometimes you can, uh, if you're proactive, uh, you can talk to factory or wherever place you wanted to work to see if they can put request on you that, hey, after this guy's done with education, we would like him to work for us. Uh, is there a reason your book is not available on Amazon Kindle because it's under review? Yes, I goofed up really bad. Uh, I, you know, when I published my first uh, edition, uh, some of my viewers, readers uh, found some mistakes. I fixed them, but they by mistake uploaded Russian version. So Amazon still did not remove original. It just says it's under review. Uh, but I have actually if you look at the links below my videos, I have a correct link and that one shows you uh, the proper way of where you go and you find both uh, elect electronic book and the paper book. Now, if you live in the United States, you can buy my paper book uh, directly from me through sputnikov.com and then you don't need to buy because from Amazon, you won't get signed copy. If you're interested in signed copy, you need to order directly from me. Okay, uh, we're moving along. Let's see what we got. Alex, Alexa Croft just finished your book. Great read. You're a great storyteller. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. And so once again, uh, for you guys who, oh, we got a professional Russian here. That's funny. I am a professional Russian. Hello, здравствуйте, professional Russian. Um, if you don't mind, uh, whoever bought my book uh, to post uh, feedback on Amazon, I didn't check recently, but I'd like to get at least 100 likes. Right now I have only 89, the last I checked. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, regular salad has a zero flavor. Yeah, you want to spice it up. You want to pepper it. You want to usually uh, what they do in Ukraine after they, you know, kill the pig, have some salad, some that pork fat. They will pepper it good, salt it good, insert fresh garlic in the salad and put it in the freezer, a cold place, and then it will get flavorful. Otherwise, yeah, just pure salad, just not much flavor unless you... Uh, uh, for, okay, we got another donation. Thank you for entertainment. Have a drink of me. Thank you, Chuck. Um, I can do that to later today. Uh, we got some plans going on today. Got pretty nice weather here in Michigan. It's sunny, a little bit chilly, but I need to change wheels on my car, swap it from winter. There's a really interesting question from Dean Spivak. He's asking, do you love Jews? <laughs> I mean, uh, no, I don't love Jews. I don't love any, like the, the whole concept of loving specific nationality is really like alien to me. I don't love any nationality. I just, everyone is, I think is equal. I grew up in a really anti-Semitic family. Uh, and I'm actually, my next video project is gonna be a super long and boring stories I'm warning right away. So I'm gonna talk about uh, Jewish people in Soviet Union and uh, me growing up. Uh, this could be quite interesting, but uh, I have a, I can say I have a Jewish friends, but uh, I grew up, you know, Soviet Union was pretty, uh, quite a hardcore anti-Semitic and it came about like lim limiting their access to education, limiting uh, Jewish access to jobs. So there's a lot to tell. I have a lot of good stories, uh, but I can say either way, I love or don't love them. You know, they are what they are. You know, do you love Ukrainians? I mean, what do you know about Ukrainians to love them or hate them, you know? This is kind of a strange question. Uh, but I had some comments, you know, on my uh, video about uh, uh, my Soviet analysis of bold and bankrupt, I mentioned the jo Jewish joke that uh, that Jew is also, uh, Jewish person also like kid approaches Jewish kid uh, person says is that true that uh, Jewish always answer to any question with the question and he's like who told you that and that was two comments that is I'm showing anti-semitic as like you have no idea like I there's a lot of funny jokes about Ukrainians about they're like they're addicted to salad like Ukrainians are stupid greedy and they uh, sell is drugs for them and I find them funny I'm an Ukrainian you know, if you don't have a sense of humor, my goodness, you know, you probably shouldn't watch this channel, especially if you don't have Soviet uh, sense of humor. So there is actually, I'll tell you, we have a, a joke about Ukrainians and Jews, right? So when the first Ukrainian was born, the Jew person set, started crying because, and the reason for this joke is like, we're just as tight with money, we're also, um, uh, so anyways, it's just Jewish people way smarter, but like Ukrainians famous for not sharing, uh, trying to keep everything themselves, uh, whatever I can't eat, like apples, I'll just have a bite at every apple so no one else will tie. Uh, Privet Tavarish, we got Charles donation, thank you. Any anti-gay propaganda laws? Well, it was generally anti-gay laws and about propaganda, but we had a law uh, that uh, if you get caught, uh, if you get caught having sex with another guy, and that's was mostly related to guys. Like I don't remember anything conversation about lesbians. Uh, there was a seventy years in prison for uh, sexual relations with same sex. So that was anti-gay law. Period. Not like propaganda. I don't think it was even thinking about propaganda if it was illegal to be gay. Now in, in Russia, in modern Russia, they have this gay propaganda laws. I don't know exactly what it is about. So, yeah. Okay, uh, moving along. But, you know, if you look back, Great Britain had anti-gay laws because I remember reading about the guy uh, who, uh, was he like, a, not the Thunderbird, something like that. He designed the first computer and they helped the, uh, British to crack Enigma code, and he was gay, and you know he pretty much helped greatly German uh, effort against uh, in war against Germany, 
And after war was over, he actually got arrested for being gay and he got castrated, chemically castrated, and he committed suicide. So, you know, Soviet Union wasn't the only one. Although kind of interesting. Yeah, thank you, Alan Turning. Yep, that's the guy. So, you know, Soviet Union wasn't the only one. It just lasted so long. And originally, you know, when the revolution happened, then uh, it was kind of like, it was fine to be gay. And then when Comrade Stalin came along, it, everything changed. Okay, uh, let's see what else. We're almost getting close to 100 uh, people gathering. Thanks for, oh, he's on a 50 pound note, no kidding. It's kind of funny that on a pound note, we have a, a gay guy kind of joke a little bit here. Pound town, there's a lot of jokes in America at least about pound town. And don't forget to uh, place likes. Uh, they help to move this live up in the, this mystery YouTube algorithm where I can't crack. We got some people that may be from India. Jimmy, Jimmy, Aja, Aja. Thank you. That was a, Indian movies were really popular. I was sure when the Soviet Union fell, Russia would follow the Finnish Swedish model. Odds, you know, if you want to look at the Finnish Swedish model, that's definitely not the Russian way, but that's what Baltic states did, right? Uh, they were quick to break off Russian de dependence on Russia from gas and oil, and they joined the European Union. I think that's what Ukraine should do, but unfortunately, uh, the communist uh, ideology, just this communist thinking was so uh, heavily penetrated that we were keep on electing former communists. And, you know, Ukraine was independent, but totally dependent on Russia and playing these games like, hey, if we don't join NATO and the European Union, do you mind to sell us cheap gas and oil? And, and you know, now we have the results. We got the war in the East when Russia took occupied Crimea and now uh, took part of the Eastern Ukraine. You know, this is what you expect from Russia. You know, you can't just play these games. You know, you can't have a one butt on two chairs and thinking you, you have a solid thing is. Um, I have a question. What product is the most selling in the Soviet Union? Bread, probably because it was <clears throat> heavily subsidized, it was really cheap. So <clears throat> a lot of people substitute their diet heavily on, with bread. I eat, I eat bread with every meal. Like for me, you eat soup with bread, you have um, mashed potatoes with bread. So I eat a lot of bread. I'm trying to kind of slow down on that, but bread will be most consumed product in the Soviet Union. Who had more power in the USSR? Uh, well, the General Secretary of the Communist Party was the ultimate leader of the Soviet Union. Uh, he was on the top of everything. Okay, moving a lot. Uh, next question. When you were in school, uh, what you were taught about Tsarist Russia? Janet asking this question. Yes, we had some uh, in the history of Soviet Union, there was a part about Tsar Russia. A lot of it was just generally through the history and Peter the Great, you know, there was a lot about it. Then a, a Decabrist uprising. Then of course, uh, I don't know in English word, Kripasnoya Prava when the peasants were like, almost like slaves and then they changed that law. Wasn't really heavy on it, but we had some education on it. And of course it was kind of in negative uh, ways and it was presented like uh, Russia was so behind the West. I mean, it was behind, but not, I don't think it was that behind. It was presented to us. Uh, so yeah, we had some education in history only about uh, Tsar Russia. And of course, them were great. Um, uh, Soviet Union was uh, the most amazing country in the world. That's also we study a lot. Uh, trade union power was not nothing there. Uh, Union was just kind of another helper of communist party to hold control of workers. They collected dues and the only like real benefit from uh, trade union I saw was getting cheap uh, travel packages, Putyovka, if you like want to travel. So, all right, we got, a, oh, I want to say we had a hundred viewers, but we got down to 99 again. 
only 50 likes so if you guys uh, here watching please like the video okay thank you for helping me write my film uh, just stuff you told me on instagram really helped uh, you're welcome if you have any more questions you said make a list and i'll try to answer it uh, so yeah always happy to help to clear the fog about life in the soviet union uh, Charlie asking question. Thank you for the nation. How important was chess in the Soviet Union? Well, depending what you mean, how important uh, for the Soviet government, it was extremely important because that's one way of uh, propaganda. You know, sports were a big deal in Soviet Union because it's like they, for some reason, decided it shows uh, that socialism more supreme than capitalism because we have a better sports. China kind of does the same thing right now. So chess was also like, we are smarter because we're socialists. So chess was heavily promoted. We had chess clubs. Then I said it was a part of the, because of lack of this mindless uh, mass uh, cultures, entertainment like TV shows, it was literally nothing to watch on TV most of the time. So people entertain the same play in chess. So they were important. Uh, as entertainment for the regular folk, and then, of course, as a policy for the government. Okay, Charles again, thank you for your donation, Charles. Appreciate your help. Uh, do you have any comrades, family members who were in the Red Army when Soviet Union went to Prague? Maybe somewhere, but we never talked about it, like that whole event, Prague and uh, events in Hungary. My dad finished, I think, his military earlier. I'm trying to think what year, because he was born in 1946, so he was done around 1956. But yeah, I didn't hear anything about uh, those riots or revolutions. It was all hush hush. Uh, they never talked about them during uh, my time. And if anyone went there, of course, they kept their mouth shut. Oh, wow, for some reason we had a huge drop in viewership. Uh, we had almost 100 ran down to 90. So people come and go. Could you get bottled water in the Soviet Union? <laughs> That's an awesome question. You know, uh, a while back, early 90s, I went to Moscow and actually stayed with Americans. And when I saw them buying water, that was like, like really a sh somebody shoot me in my head. The whole idea of buying water was so alien to me that I was like, oh my God, like you have a water in the sink, why would you buy water? The whole idea of buying water was just just preposterous. How about that word? I'm trying to get work that one out, preposterous. So yeah, there was no bottled water besides mineral water. Mineral water, you could buy bottled, but not regular water. That's, we supposedly had a great water. David, uh, thank you for your donation of 100 rubles. I made good quality beef jerky. Send me some to St. Petersburg. We can work out the deal. The problem with shipping is so ridiculously expensive. That was the price of gold. I can't believe you don't have any American goods stores um, in St. Petersburg. You assume there'll be some kind of American grocery. Hmm. Because like when I, and I know about foodstuffs, that's another thing you need to check. Like I know I was, uh, some people were asking to, wanted to send me some presents um, uh, from Russia. And uh, my kids really like this uh, snack uh, croutons. They make them in Russia and Ukraine. They have like a beef flavor, salo flavor. It's called sukhariki. And it's illegal to send them by mail from Russia. It's really wild. And I think another guy, I help him, um, in, from Kazakhstan, same thing. So I'm not sure with this beef jerky if it's actually even allowed to be shipped. But yeah, send me email. I can uh, try to check it out. I mean, that stuff is not that expensive, but shipping could be really pricey. Like to send my book, that's one of the reasons I don't sell a lot of them in to Russia because I have, you know, Russian, American, Niki. Just to send the book is $23. So there's not many people in Russia can afford, you know, 35 bucks to buy a book, unfortunately. So 
Uh, did you have sports club in the Soviet Union to go after school? Uh, was being an athlete a good job? Uh, we did have sports club, not many. I actually went to Dynama sports club for a while. I was uh, going, it's called sports walking, but I couldn't master actually that weird walking when you swing your hips. Uh, so I was doing running and, and a lot of, yeah, you could get on um, but good job. Mostly had to do it as a side job. Uh, you work somewhere and then you run. If you do a really good job, they may start paying you uh, to be like professional athlete. Although in Soviet Union, we didn't have a professional athlete. You're still like being a worker or a military officer. But if you're really good, you could probably can get, uh, you know, go to competitions and get help from government. But I don't say it was a good job. Mostly it's, you know, soccer or some other popular sports. But we did have sports clubs in Soviet Union. When your teachers were discussing Marxism in school, what, was it apparent that they really didn't believe in it or they were idealistic? Um, it's a good question because I think it was like a mutual understanding that he needed to teach it and we need to attend it. Because, you know, I was in, it, it was taught in high school, American like a high school. Uh, so this is a ninth to 10th grade when we were 15, 16. By that time, most of us were quite cynical about the whole socialism thing. Because, you know, this is right at the end that we're talking 1987, 88 is when I was finishing school. So it was like pretty much, yeah, whatever. You need to pre pretend you teach us and we will pretend that we'll listen. But the guy who taught us, on he ended up uh, immigrating to Israel. So at least he was really good. I remember he was presenting really well and comparing, you know, how the workers being treated uh, in Soviet Union versus workers to treat it in uh, like America. Uh, and he was really good, but he ended up moving to Israel. So I know he wasn't uh, honest to say or being uh, idealistic. How often do people ate bread in the Soviet USSR? I don't know. I can't tell for everyone in Soviet Union. I ate every meal. I ate in breakfast. It's not just bread, but like you have mashed potatoes, fried eggs, and bread, and maybe tea. Or then you have borscht or soup for lunch. You have bread with it. You definitely have to have bread when you have a liquid soup. And then, of course, you have dinner, you have bread too. So, yeah, we ate a lot of bread. And then it will be uh, one way I want to. I like bread a lot. I need to do it again. You fry slice of bread on a real sunflower oil. And so it make kind of grienka. So it'd be like crunchy bread. And then you rub fresh garlic on it. And I know for some Americans it will sound horrible. And then you kind of like uh, put little pieces of salo. You know, we eat it with salo. So you have grienka salo. Good stuff. So we eat bread a lot. What is your favorite gas vehicle? So gas, um, I really didn't have any favorite vehicles and honestly in Soviet Union. I mean, everyone wanted to have a Lada and I think the six model was considered the best for like engine. I'm not sure if the transmissions were any different, but I never cared much about gas, like big Volga cars, like older ones that look cool now to me, but You know, it, it was just so unreal for me to own the car. I never, besides being in a taxi, I never drove gas. So, yeah. Uh, question about uh, Eastern Bloc cars like Skoda, Dacia, Trabant. We didn't have them at all. They might be, uh, I've seen Skoda's online pictures. So, yeah, for some reason we didn't import any cars from Romania or East Germany or uh, Czechoslovakia. The only cars I remember would be like, it looked like a like a minivan. It's a Zhuk from Poland. Uh, those were quite a few of those in, in Ukraine, at least. It's not really a minivan, it's like a cargo van. It's sized like a Chevy Astro, Zhuk, which means a bug. Uh, we had those. Is there Ukrainian mafia? I mean, I don't know about now, but in the 90s, we had plenty of Ukrainian mafia. Uh, OK. 
Okay, we talked about bread. We have somebody from Belarus. When I asked you before, uh, you said you're a world citizen, but do you prefer to be called Russian or Ukrainian? Uh, it depends on situation. If people make fun of Russians, I'm telling them, well, too bad, I'm Ukrainian. If people make fun of Ukrainians, I'm saying, well, who cares, I'm Russian. If people make fun of Ukrainians and Russians, it's like, wow, it's funny because it's I'm Soviet, so it doesn't relate to me at all. So I really, I mean, I'm Ukrainian, but nationality, a uh, while back when no one knew about Ukraine here in the 90s and so in America, I was telling everyone I'm Russian just because I t got tired explaining what's being Ukrainian. Uh, but I don't have like, I don't have a choice where I would be born or what nationality. Uh, Matt, I'll see you later. Thanks for joining. I have people going to work on Saturday. Um, so I said, I feel myself like a uh, citizen of the world and it'll be fantastic to have the world when anybody can travel anywhere. Like, okay, I would like to go to Australia and live and work there for, you know, a year or two. Okay, now I would like to try to live in Africa, you know, just have one planet, uh, one world, one country, no borders, you move freely around. Uh, that's actually, this is what uh, uh, idea of communism in a lot of the science fiction was kind of talking about the situation when uh, communism took over, you know, the whole world. And it's pretty much, you just, uh, you hardly have any possessions. You live in a small apartment because you have a lot of goods and then you move here and there. You do what you enjoy to do. And for example, there'll be some jobs like that everyone will be required to do for a while because we needed some rare metals to be mined on the bottom of the ocean. So then once in five years, you, you go there and you work for two, three months. It's like paying your dues uh, to the society. So that sounds pretty great, but unfortunately it's, what is it called? Utopia, right? I wonder if we can reach 200 likes. We have 67 right now. So see if you guys didn't uh, click like yet. But ideally that'll be great if we just remove the borders and have, um, you know, don't spend money on military because we're wasting so many resources just to keep military. I mean, Pentagon apparently is the biggest polluter in the world. So, Okay, uh, moving along. It's hard not to be anti-Semitic when you know who controls the central banks. Uh, and they started the USSR. I mean, it's... This is kind of an interesting topic to discuss, but you know, if they are smarter than other people that you didn't get into the central bank, then it's not their fault, right? This is kind of this view, you know, there's a plenty of non-Jewish people that run giant corporations and uh, do whatever. So to blaming everything on Jews, it's really not cool. I mean, but it makes the easy answer, you know, it's like, Hitler found the answer for Germany. Hey, it's all Jews' fault, right? Uh, Trump found the easy answer. Like, it's all these illegal migrants from South fault. America is not doing great because we got this rapist and uh, drug smugglers coming from the South and they rape our women and sell us drugs, you know? So that's always for some people that's nice to have an obvious enemy that gives them good excuse why things are not good. But yeah, it's... Apparently Norway was uh, had a homosexuality illegal until 1973, and that's so gay. Were you or your family me members were members of the Communist Party? Nope, no, none of my family or close relatives were members of Communist Party. I asked because people have said that maybe life of members as well as city dwellers were good, but the rest was bad. I need, you need to be way up high in, up on the food chain in the Communist Party to get your life better. Uh, but uh, definitely in the city, uh, life was way better than out in the country because it was literally you leave the city and you go in the village and it's like you, it drops like seven, 50 years back or 100 years back. You know, like my grandparents never had plumbing. Like you have outhouse, uh, 
no running water. You use horses to plow fields. You survive on your plot of land and, and your animals you'll have in your barns is like, and it was totally normal. Like, yeah, so everyone was trying to escape the villages and move in the cities because just to have central water and a, in a running toilet in your in your apartment, it was like, holy crap. So definitely if you live in a city, your lifestyle was 100% better than in the villages. And I said, to be a communist, if you wanted to move up, uh, it definitely helped. Like the, if you want to be a director of the factory, you have to be a communist member. You, it was really hard, like why are you not communist and you want to be upper management, so. All right, so we got about 15 minutes left. Let's get us to 100 likes, that'll be awesome. Um, let's see. I remember when I lived in Moscow, people get arrested all the time for homosexual activity. I honestly don't know anybody like, of course, no one will be walking around and says I'm gay, uh, but uh, definitely, and you know, it's another interesting part, like a lot of gay people, they're like artistic. So if you want to arrest people, you go somewhere with the theaters, ballet, kind of those activities, movies, those were people who quite often could be gay not at the factories. So Ian was a blue collar family. So definitely I'd never had the news like my dad will come from work like, oh my God, I can't believe this guy. Spray painter that I work with that like, turned out to be gay. He got caught making out with another guy. You know, I never had that. Is fish popular in Soviet Union? Like fish and yes, it was quite popular, especially for retired people because they had nothing else to do. When will you move back to Sweden? Uh, I never lived in Sweden, so I won't move back. I need to check it out, that picture of the Alan Turing on the 50 pound note. That's really interesting. Uh, question about the USSR and multi-ethnic union. Uh, I got a bunch of videos already. If you scroll through my videos, I have a video about uh, relations between Ukrainians and Russians, about Southern Republics. There's a lot of information already on the video. Uh, already recorded answer. Joining from Uganda. Wow, Svetlana, what are you doing in Uganda? That's pretty neat. I've never been in Africa. Okay, so you see, I'm so behind, like I was talking about Pound Town a while back, now only I'm there with your questions. Do you still have your Communist Party membership card? No, I have my Komsomol membership booklet uh, ID, but I've never been a communist. In, in my heart or in my uh, on the paper, I've never been a communist. Are you for Russia or for Ukraine? Uh, I might stop watching you. <laughs> I what I mean for Russia? I like Russian people. I like Russia. I don't like Putin. I want Ukraine to be independent and uh, do their own bidding and not to be uh, like slaves of Russia. So you can stop watching me if you want. I, it's your personal choice. Crimea is and will always be Russian. Crimea was, if you look at the history of Crimea, you're probably going to find out it wasn't always Russian. It was occupied by Russia, taken away from Tatars and Turkey way back. So it's a good question, the Crimea. Yeah, it took it from Turkey. So it's might as well give it back to Turkey if you want to. How, how deep back in the history you want to go? When the Soviet Union uh, separated, Russia signed the agreement that they respect the borders and that the uh, Crimea will belong to Ukraine. So. When you were in school, uh, what they teach you about Marx? You know, not much. Thank you for your donation. Uh, by the way, I wasn't, I guess, paying much attention. You know, that was one of those classes that I really didn't like. It was just a waste of time. So it wasn't, they didn't teach us about Marx per se, like his history of his life, his biography, just Marxism was one of the uh, stones that our basement was built of Soviet countries. So Marxism, Leninism, that was always expression. Uh, Marxism, you know, and Leninism, that's the foundation of the whole Soviet ideolo ideology, but 
you know, capital was mentioned, but I never read anything of that, so I can't tell you much. I, once again, about comment on Crimea. Of course, if you arrest every Tatar person and send them to Siberia to die, then you move Russians into Crimea, then you make Crimea Russian. If you look up what happened in 1945, 1946, how they took everyone and removed from Crimea to make it Russian or Soviet. Anyway. Uh, moving along. Uh, the question, back to your question, long story short, who's supposed to be George Washington? I mean, Lenin was the main character of everything Soviet. You know, he was the one who uh, did the revolution. He's the one who created the country. He was the first leader. So everything was Lenin, pretty much. You know, you guys have quite a few people, Washington, and you got Abraham Lincoln and others. Lenin was everything. We didn't have any, anybody else because with time, you know, Stalin became bad, Khrushchev became bad. Okay, see if I can I come back to where I was. Sorry, I lost, I might have just started here. Did you watch show the Americans? No, I didn't. I, quite a few people recommended me to watch it. But for some reason, I have no mind to watch like short series like G uh, Queen's Gambit. It's only like eight parts. But if it's like seasons and seasons, I really, I don't have time to watch so many. The last time I watched something that long was a Game of Thrones. And after that, like, I don't want to spend so much time uh, watching uh, people pretending other people's pretended life. So... Uh, if I remember correctly, you lived in Ukraine. Yes, I lived in Ukraine. Uh, did you ever see any sidecar motorcycles? That's only pretty much motorcycles I've seen out in the country is a sidecar. Urals or Dnieper was a sidecar. It was easier to buy them than cars. So people use them as cars pretty much. In the city, people ride motorcycles for fun. Uh, out in the country, if you you know people were buying sidecar motorcycles because they were made more practical you can move potatoes you can move hay uh, did you have a pet growing up nope uh, we never had pets well we had turtle and i had fish but it's i don't consider them pets like it's cats or dogs turtle we got rid of it pretty quick because it was pooping in the most inaccessible uh, areas um so and then i have fish tank forever I, I really enjoyed having fish you know they quiet they don't scream and they poop always in the same spot so no pets uh okay i'm getting swamped a little bit here with donations and questions so i gotta try to answer those see if i can find how to do that how often the individual soviet anthems were played so uh not often. Uh, I mean, Soviet anthem was played all the time every morning on main radio stations and TV stations and the, when it's the end of it. I think Ukrainian was played on Ukrainian language station, but uh, not as often. I heard Soviet uh, main Soviet anthem way more often than anything else. And I can't tell you about other countries. So what percentage of party members were true believers? <laughs> It's depending, uh, you're talking about 1920s or 1980s. Definitely, it was going downhill. The membership was going up and because uh, in the end, it just became like requirement. Like, I don't want to be a member of Komsomol, which is like young communist member. But I was told that I won't be able to join, uh, go to college. The only take Komsomol members. So I became a Komsomol member to get to college. So, you know, it's. It's more like careerism car car in Russian. You do it because of career, not because you believe in it. Do all Soviet people speak Russian or some speak every Slavic language? I spoke, uh, my first language was Russian. I spoke in fluently Ukrainian. Now I will struggle. I mean, I, I can try to speak Ukrainian, but I'll be putting English words in it. I understand completely. I can read Ukrainian, but 
I can understand um, uh, Belarusian, Polish. I mean, it's not Soviet Republic. So you can understand Slavic languages when you listen for a while, but you can't speak Belarusian or Ukrainian only because you speak Russian. It's actually, you have to have your ear tuned up. Like I can understand, I worked quite a bit with Bulgarians and after a while I learned to understand them. But usually if you, uh, if they do anything like in Ukrainian language on the, on the Russian TV, they'll put subtitles because many Russians, they can't understand Ukrainian. There are some words which is different. I mean, it's really close, but uh, Ukrainian language has more Western words than Russian. Like we say strike for strike instead of Zabastovka. So there's a lot of words that helicopter <laughs> instead of a uh, vertolot. And uh, back to the pet question, uh, I tried to get, I asked my mother once to have a pet, but she said I'll have to clean poop after the dog and that killed it right away. Like it's kind of interesting. I'll even being like seven year old, I thought about cleaning the dog's poop and I'm like, nope, not doing it. Hey, great news. We got a hundred likes. So thank you so much. Uh, Okay, so we got another comment. Uh, Lucia, thank you for your donation. I don't think there's any reason to be anti-Jew. It makes life simple if you're trying to find a reason why your life suck or generally country life, you, you you know, it couldn't be fault of the government that maybe your guy is in power and you don't want to blame him. So that's somebody else's fault. Okay, I'm trying to catch up with the donation question here really quick. Can you explain what these uh, tanky people here are on here on YouTube? Uh, also, have you checked on Veronica Olson, Ukrainian YouTuber in Michigan? I think I picked on her channel. I didn't see anything that would be interested to me. Uh, but uh, I can't explain you tankies. I mean, uh, there's a quite a few people that have a really like romantic uh, uni Soviet unicorns and rainbows type of, uh, they believe in what Soviet Union was like workers paradise. And I, for a long time, I thought when the people said tankies, I thought they just people who love to play a uh, world of tanks. So for me, it was like, haha, KV2. Uh, but then of course I discovered, uh, communism 101 on Reddit. And I was happy to join because I thought they may be interested to talk to someone who actually lived in Soviet Union, but I got kicked out of there pretty quick because they got upset because I didn't fit their mold, the understanding of the Soviet paradise. I mean, I don't say it was hell, but definitely wasn't paradise. I mean, it was, it was okay, especially if you don't know any better. So, but uh, thank you again for your donation. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see if I wonder if we get 150 people watching or not. And okay, we'll talk about Anthem Koala question. Thank you for your donation. And question and donation from Charlie. Did you get taught about Rus, uh, the people that Russians came from in the history? Did you get taught things that far back? I mean, what I remember from like history of Slavic people, everything kind of started around Kiev, Kievska Rus. Uh, but apparently there's a lot of changes were done in history uh, during Stalin regime, because he wanted to kind of change the history story. We're looking back like this 1984 situation. Okay, we need to fit the history to what we have. So. I don't think we, the actual term Kievska Rus was invented during Stalin. It wasn't called Kievska Rus. I don't, don't quote me on that, but it's kind of what I saw here and there. So, but, you know, we learned about Kiev was like the capital of the Slavic people. And then of course, because of the Tatars raids, uh, it was kind of went downhill and then it moved more north. Uh, and then Moscow became a center you know, of uh, Russia. At that time was not even Russia. Called, it wasn't called Russia for a long time. It was Moscovia, right? So Moscow, Moscow was the capital and Moscovia was just one of the small countries like uh, 
Kniazostva, and then they slowly started spreading and fighting neighbors and occupying uh, territories and then growing. And it's, it became called Russia, I believe, only during the Peter the Great. And that's when he's like, okay, we're not Moscow, we have a bigger than that, we're Russian Empire. Uh, so this is kind of what we thought, but like it started from Kiev, uh, Kievska Rus, and then it went down, moved up to Moscow because they were further north and protected by forests. So that's all I remember. Okay, well, we're about at one hour mark, so I'll need to get going. Sorry, as always, I can't catch up with every question. There's a question about former Yugoslavia stuff, and you can check. I have a big it's two videos at least about Yugoslavia and Soviet Union. Uh, Soviet comrade asking about situation in the USSR during January 1991. I need to look it up what was going on during January 1991. Uh, that's the last year of the Soviet Union existence. Can't tell you from top of my head, I, it was a long time ago. So once again, I'll try to write down some most uh, interesting questions, but unfortunately as always I'm way behind. I am planning to do uh, limited lives uh, for my Patreons. I'm a really crappy uh, Patreon guy. Uh, you can buy uh, things, Soviet Union related things. It's best way to buy it on eBay or uh, Etsy, Etsy.com, E-T-S-Y. There's a plenty, eBay had tons, I mean, if you have money, you can buy like a uh, space suits. They sell everything under the sun can buy a Soviet car, anything that older than 25 years, uh, now it's considered a vintage car. Did you have condoms in the Soviet Union? Oh, we had millions of those. Kind of funny thing, the Soviet, uh, the Russian word for condom is gandon. And it also was used the word to call somebody, like if you call somebody asshole, I apologize for my language. The, he's a real gandon, like he's a real asshole. So yes, we had a lot of gandone, a lot of condoms in the Soviet Union. Oh my goodness, that's funny. All right, guys, uh, I'll be wrapping up. Uh, thank you for my, so much for joining. Uh, don't be a condom, be a good guy. Uh, so have you listened to March of Slavyanka? I had to, it was played all the time. I almost read that you have a collection of Russian condoms, so... Anyways, uh, as my daughter says, peace out, homies. Uh, I will make a, a closed YouTube live for my Patreons. Uh, so if you support my job, work on patreon.com, I'll post the link there. Maybe I'll try to do it, I'm not sure, maybe tonight or maybe tomorrow. And then we'll have uh, less people and more uh, possibilities to answer your questions. Thanks so much again. Uh, thanks for joining me, guys. Have a good rest of your day and we'll talk to you soon. And my next videos I'm planning to do about uh, Jews in the Soviet Union. So stay tuned. Goodbye.